Okay, I'd like to uh, <coughs> continue our teaching out of the book of Colossians chapter 2 uh, regarding the distinction, one of the many distinctions between a true shepherd and a false shepherd. And let me find my phone here. Colossians 2. I'm going to be reading from the expanded version today. The expanded translation. I'll start at verse 1. Now Paul writes under inspiration of the Holy Spirit I, to the church at Colossae, I want you to know how hard I fight for you and others who've never seen me, met me personally, or seen my face in the flesh. Now, as a continuation of yesterday's lesson regarding Yeshua as a person, as a living, breathing soul, an individual just like you or me, The one we ident are the one in whom we are identified with, an identity <clears throat> that comes not from man. Our identification with Yeshua has been established by God. But I want you to check this out and see how it applies to that subject. I want again reading from. Uh, Verse 1 here. I, Paul is saying, I'm writing this to those of you who have never seen me, met me personally, or seen my face in the flesh. Just because you haven't seen Jesus' face in the flesh, just because you haven't met him personally, doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Doesn't mean he doesn't see you. Doesn't mean he doesn't shepherd you doesn't mean he, he's not a man just because you haven't met him yet. He lives in you, though, via the Holy Spirit. I'm identified with a man. I'm not identified with a religion or a doctrine, and I'm certainly not identified with my abusers. Okay, verse 2, <clears throat> Paul writes that I want your hearts to be strengthened, encouraged, and comforted. And that is what a true shepherd wants for his sheep. I want their hearts to be strengthened. Oh, and here's another thought. A false shepherd is going to appeal to your head, to your intellect. That's all he has. There is no spring of life or knowledge flowing out of his spirit. And I'm hoping we get into that later in this chapter. He's dead. Whereas you know him. He may know, the the uh, false teacher may know his words, but you know him. Okay, Paul writes that I want you to be comforted in your heart, to be edified and encouraged, like a true shepherd would. Now get this. And this leads, this is leading somewhere. This is the ultimate goal of a true shepherd. This should be the motive of every true teacher and pastor and shepherd and moral authority. This leads to your knowing fully God's secret. That is, Christ 
himself. The goal of every true shepherd of Christ is for the sheep to know the person of Christ, to know him personally. To be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always lead us to the Messiah, the man. And God, He is God. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm just emphasizing the humanity part of Him because that is the part of Him that identified with our humanity. Okay, I want your hearts to be encouraged and strengthened because this will lead to you knowing what Paul calls the, the divine mystery in whom all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are kept safely hidden. Um, we read in, in chapter 1, verse 26 of Colossians that it is the Messiah himself who is our hope of glory. Okay, verse 4. Now we're getting into the meat of this. Paul writes that I say all of this to you. In other words, I am telling you that all of the treasures of wisdom, let's see, I'll read it here, treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in the man, Jesus. All wisdom, all spiritual insight, all understanding and knowledge is hidden in the person of Christ. And Paul writes, I'm telling you this. Here's why I'm telling you this. Here's why I'm reminding you of who you are. Here's why I'm reminding you of who you are identified with. In verse 4, I say this so that no one can deceive you. I say this so no one can fool you or deceive you by arguments that seem good, but are false. I say this so that no one, so that no false teacher can come in your midst and fool you with persuasive, enticing arguments. The false teacher is going to present you with good-sounding, virtuous-sounding arguments. A true shepherd is going to present the living, breathing, ever-present Christ to you. The false teacher is going to present, for lack of a better term, Christianity to you in the form of a, a doctrine or, a, or an intellectual lesson that sounds good to your, to your emotions. They love to appeal to your emotions. Whereas a true shepherd is going to do his utmost to introduce you and in encourage you to enter into a deeper and richer fellowship with a man who happens to be God. Once again, verse 4, I'm telling you this so that no one can fool you by their persuasive arguments that seem good but are false. Okay, verse 5, Paul writes, For though I am absent from you in my body, my heart or my spirit is with you, and I am happy, I rejoice 
to see your good lives or your good order is what it's translated your order and your strong firm faith in Christ in the person of Christ you know I when I was reading this this morning I, I it's almost as if Yeshua himself is writing this when he says even though I'm absent from you in the body I am present with you in the spirit and that is true for each and every one of us who know Jesus even though he's absent from us in the body he is still present with you he's an eternal spirit and he's with you and he rejoices over you now what Paul's writing here I believe is that uh, he, he was beholding their order or their arrangement one meaning of the word order is their arrangement in today's vernacular we, we would say this uh, Paul or the Holy Spirit through Paul is saying okay I can see that your organ organizational structure matches uh, the plan of the Messiah for you you have good leaders in other words the people leading your church are, are uh, genuinely called and genuinely obedient to God and, and he was happy over it which leads me to believe that this church at Colossae had not been infiltrated by false teachers. Their chain of command was in line with heaven's chain of command. That church was. <clears throat> but man, he is warning them. Paul, through the, Yeshua through Paul is warning these people about those false teachers. Now, if you want to read a, an epistle in which Paul is dealing with a church that has been infiltrated by false teachers, go to Galatians. Oh, but this, he, that's how Jesus is with us. He, he, even though he's absent from us in the flesh, in the body, doesn't make him any less of a person. Okay, verse 6. Therefore, as you received Christ, as you received the Messiah, Jesus, the Lord. As you have received. That's a nice way of saying, just as you have I identified yourself, joined yourself, united your self to another self, Jesus. So walk in Him, so continue to live in Him, in Christ Jesus, I'm going to emphasize this, in Christ Jesus, the Lord. Paul adds that that little ditty right there. The Adonai. The word Lord in Hebrew is Adonai. It is also El, spelled E-L, El, which means Most High. As hard as it is for us to grasp, and it is, <laughs> without the Holy Spirit, and the word, it's impossible to grasp. This person that you are joined to, this person that you are one with, this person that you are identified with, spirit, soul, and body, even your body is, is identified with the Lord Jesus. 
it, it's going to be resurrected like his. You're going to get a body just like his. That It's in storage now. I say that to let you know that you are identified. You are one with a person, a being. Spirit, your soul is identified with him. The scripture says you have the mind of Christ. Your body's identified with Yeshua. That's another reason to stay away from wicked people and avoid them like the scripture says because they love to they love playing with flesh the wicked they love messing with your soul your conscience and your flesh they don't know it they're messing with someone whose ev- their very flesh and soul are one with the Lord. But what Paul has in his mind are those false shepherds, those wolves in sheep's clothing when he's telling them, just as you received this person, walk in him. Let your identification with the Master influence the way you behave. Let your identification with Him manifest itself through the way you walk and conduct yourself, including with the wicked. You might say, Jesus hung around with the wicked when He was on the earth. No, He didn't. You just have a hard time recognizing who the wicked were in Jesus' day, just like we do today. We think a wicked person is the guy robbing a bank or strung out on meth or, or, or what have you. Well, we don't. <laughs> and I guess who watch this channel or, or me, I don't, really, I don't think we do. But a lot of people do. That's evil. Well, it is in a sense, but true evil is, is, is found in an apostate. And that's the one we're identified with, Jesus. He attacked the apostates of his generation. No, not Jews. I hear this all the time, too. You know, Jesus hated the Jews. He attacked the Jewish leaders. He was attacking the apostates among the leadership there. There were those who believed in him. He wasn't attacking the Jewish religion. He was attacking the apostates within that religion. Does that make sense? Yes. That's who you're identified with. So I'm going to conduct myself the way my Savior did, my Lord did, toward evil. Avoid them. Yeshua avoided them most of the time. He just ignored them. But but if they but when they got too close to him, he wasn't afraid to confront them. But he didn't love them like we've been taught. No, he pronounced curses on them. Actually. Oh. But this phrase, as you have received Yeshua the Messiah, the El, the Most High. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but, you know, Paul is telling these people, listen, you're in a covenant which is what I'm really, what I've been talking about this whole time. You're in a covenant with a man who happens to be the Lord over everything. Everything. 
principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world are not your Lord. Demons are not my Lord. Tell you who else isn't my Lord? The government. I certainly don't identify with the government, but they're not my Lord either. I hope the visible church remembers this the next time the deep state decides to release another thing. Principalities aren't my Lord. Rulers of the darkness of this world, no, you're not my Lord either. And you're not the Lord, that's for sure. Mom isn't my Lord. Dad isn't my Lord. My abusive spouse certainly isn't my Lord. And I'm not going to call him that. My children are not my Lord. My job isn't my Lord. No, the one I'm identified with is the person I'm identified with, the person I'm in a blood covenant with is not just my Lord, the Lord. Every angel, let me tell you this, every single angel, good or bad, must bow their knee to this person that we've been joined to. So make the right choice. Identify with the winner. Identify with the king. This will help you discern false teachers. I'm telling you it will. Keeping this mindset and here's where I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm not going to read it. But you got to keep this mindset because one reason why. A tactic that I've seen every single false teacher I've ever been able to identify uses. Every single one of them without fail. They're going to say something or present something to you that's going to leave a a sliver or maybe more than a sliver of doubt in you concerning your standing before God and perhaps man even that they can fill they're going to point there's a reason for this they're going to try to point out faults that's this is going to be part of their persuasive argument toward you they're going to look for faults it's subtle they're not going to come right out and say it we're talking about the devil here, Mr. Subtle himself. It's going to sound good and virtuous and right, but you're going to listen to them, and probably on a subconscious level more than a conscious, they're going to make you feel like something's missing. There's something missing in me, and maybe this guy can fill it. Paul writes... I won't read it, but further in this chapter, he writes that you are complete in him. Therefore, don't let any man sit in judgment over you when the Lord and the Most High of heaven and earth has already said, we're good. I'm one with you. You're complete in me. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think I'll stop here. Okay. Thank you, guys. God bless you.